Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday, folks. And don't forget, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D hyphen oracle.com. That's Ord hyphen oracle.com. Tim Ward, what's going on? Well, actually, let's, let's go look at that Zwag breath thrust indicator. Ooh, I like so, it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, last October we were talking about the... Um, uh, we call it an oscillator. It had to get below minus 300. Yes. And uh, within two, you know. So, you know, this is kind of a similar indicator, but on a shorter time frame. Okay. It, it doesn't take weeks to, to kick in. And, you know, this can kick in. Well, actually, it does take weeks. It has 10 days, which is basically two uh, trading two trading weeks. But yes. I still think it's, it's got a chance to kick in here. We'll have to wait and see. But, uh, you know, the... the in a nutshell, again, this is advanced issues over the total issues on NYSE. Then you take a 10-day average of that. So it has to, 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 to get the indicator started, I guess you might say, you have to hit below point, uh, 0.40, which it did on, or actually has to turn up from below point 0.40, which it did on April 18th. Okay. So that was last Thursday. And so now it has to go to point 0.6. Um, or higher within 10 trading days, which would be, uh, if you do the numbers, it comes out uh, next Wednesday. Okay. So um, so anyhow, today we're, uh, we did hit 0 .4, uh, below 0 .4 last Thursday, and uh, we got up to, I think, 0 .52 or 0 .56 maybe. But right now we're 0 .48. Oh, so, so yeah, so this brought us right back down. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, look, today, you know, it was a down day, so it, yeah. it affects uh, it's a five-day average. Or, right. Yeah, it's a 10-day yeah, average. So down a little bit, but we'll need uh, a, still a surge here. So if it, put this way, if the market kind of mills around here and consolidates over the next two, three, four days, you're not going to reach the uh, 0.6. Yes. So what has to happen is another strong rally, like coming off that uh, recent low we had here on April 19th. You had to have a, kind of a, a, a bullish surge in advanced decline line to get that. And so even though we're down today about you know a third of a point, give or take, advanced decline is about uh, two to one to the downside, so that's not going to help that number. But we still got tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for this indicator to clear the, the right the kick in, I guess you might say. I think there's still a good chance. If it does do it, then that really opens the door for the bigger trend. And you could see something like the last time this got triggered was basically the October lows. I know, and you had a pretty much of a straight up rally. And so that's, that's what I'm hoping for. I don't know if we'll get it or not, but um, either way, there's there's still not a top of any consequence. But if we do get the ZBT to kick in, it would suggest another powerful rally most likely is in the making. So, exactly. Don't now, know. Tim, let me let me ask you: Did did Marty have? It's Marty Zweig. That's the guy's name, folks. Okay. Did he have anything that was like this at the highs also, or is this just something that that is at the lows? Meaning the ratio. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He. he he might have. Uh, okay. I kind of picked this up over the years and stuff. And yeah, you know, he was a brilliant man. He he really understood how the market works. I listen, man. I yeah. I interviewed him at least, I think at least four or five times, and it was so cool because he was always talking about. I can really understand now how he made really good money because he was always talking about ringing the bell. He always was saying to me like when we were, and when I was interviewing him, he, you know. I wish I knew these things here. I didn't know some of this stuff that I know now, that's for sure. Um, but he, you know, was one of these guys, I'm going to ring the bell. That's it. You got to gotta take the money. And I can see why, because these ratios, this ratio, I, I love these ratios to do, but the, these ratios are where it's at, man. I mean, I, I just, yeah. because it's, it's you know, you're, you're, you have something underlying that no one has, number one. And when you look at it fundamentally, to me, it, it fundamentally works. I mean, it, it makes sense because it's like it is the market. What you're looking at when you that is the real market. You know what I mean? So pretty cool. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. You're looking. At, you're not looking at opinions. You're looking at well, actually facts. These yes. are the facts of the market right. as they're developing, and you just got to learn how to read the facts. Right. And so, uh, where is uh, the money? Where is so it going know, I'm in? Thinking, yeah. I'm, Go ahead. What would you say? No, it's just like, exactly. Where's the money going? Is it going in or coming out? Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah, so. exactly right. Yeah. yeah, where's the money going? And this this is a good chart that, you know, and, and McCall and Oscillator uh, yes. thing, too, it, it works on a bigger time frame, but it's similar to what this, you know, this wag breast stress indicator, it, you know, the McCall and Oscillator. It is. A selling climax and a buying climax type thing. Yeah. Kind of same thing, but on a smaller scale. No, so, there's no doubt, yeah. man. No doubt. So, yeah, here comes the music. Here comes the music. Well, guess what? <laughs> Tim Ward and Tom O'Brien, we're going to be right back, folks, okay? Because we're going to be bisecting and dissecting this market. And that S&P, so picture, folks, the S&P is only down 18. It was down 84, okay? This is going to be a rejection of lower price on lighter volume today, which is a total mind blower. Stay right there. Tim and I are coming right back. And don't forget, folks, you can get hold of Tim at ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrial is down 326. Nasdaq's off 78. S&Ps are off 20. And, folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, tomorrow we're here again, live trading with our man, Mr. Larry Pezzavento. So if you go into featured content, you're going to see live trading Fridays with Larry. This is going to be tomorrow, okay, 9 o'clock in the morning to noon, Larry did the first one two weeks ago. Bottom line, tomorrow morning, you want to be in, you want to trade live, you want to follow Larry, you want to make some money. Bottom line, come over to our website at TFNN, and you're going to see right on fe featured content. And then what you do when you're checking output, live with Larry. And we'll, we'll, that the promotion code and the bottom line, that'll bring that cost down to $250. So. The whole live trading session starts tomorrow, folks, 9 o'clock. Check it out. You know, always dynamic, that's for sure. And you talk about volatility, and that's all, all us traders need volatility, and we have it. So you can take everything out of the middle. You know, that's what it comes down to. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord, and we are talking markets out here. So let's see. Okay, Tim, let's so I'm chart. ready. Let's, yeah, let's go to chart two. Okay. And uh, really, the you know, we talked about the VIX before. Yes. And the VIX really, you know, acceleration of the VIX really tells a big story. When you, when you hear somebody, Gee, the VIX was up, you know, 30% today. Yeah. You know, well, that's a real good sign because you accelerate into a low uh, on the right. market. Uh, and the VIX, so you put a Bollinger Band on the VIX, and that's all it is. There's a VIX on the bottom window, and I got a Bollinger Band on it. Okay. And basically, the Bollinger Band it's a twenty day do uh, it's a twenty day moving average, and the upper Bollinger Band and the lower Bollinger Band are two uh, two deviations apart. Yes. So, uh, so you know, it, it measures you know. So, so the the average is the middle line. That's a twenty day average. So when it gets two deviations above or below that line, usually if you're close, the market's gone too fast, too quick in one direction. Right. And so, um, over the last, uh, this is probably about three years, it's pretty rare to get a signal where the, uh, the VIX hits the, uh, it touches above the upper Bollinger Band. And I got them circled in red on the bottom chart there. I see that, so yeah. So we had one, yeah, we, we just had the, the last signal was just uh, like last week. Right. Um, and so the previous one was the October low. And one before, the, and so that was like a good six months ago or better than previous one. But looks like about uh, March of 2023 was another one. Then you had kind of two of them coming at, um, you know, that top actually went down for it went up. Anyhow, so this is kind of an important signal. It's a pretty rare uh, signal. So I'm thinking this is more than just a trading range. If you notice, all those blue lines going across the chart are when this – indicator triggered and if you notice they all came at uh, except the ones back in 2022 that kind of a top there uh but all of them bounced and the last two of them were major lows yeah so well, i can see that and yeah. since we're in an uptrend now not a sideways or a downtrend 
so I'm thinking uh, this. I'm thinking this ZBT we talked about on chart one could still get triggered here because this is kind of a rare signal for the VIX to hit this upper close above its upper Bollinger Band. Okay. So I'm thinking this is kind of an important signal. And, yeah, I mean we know, just. Next, w- uh, Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, there's no doubt. What you just said last week, we're at 21 on the VIX, and, you know, today it exploded up, and all of a sudden now it's almost flat. We're at 15. <laughs> so, pretty right. wild. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, this is a, week, this is a weekly time frame. This is not a daily. So, yes. But the weeklies had uh, triggered in here. So the weeklies, you know, the monthlies rule the dailies, or monthly rule the weeklies, the weeklies rule the dailies, the dailies rule the hour, and all the way down. Right. So this is kind of an important signal. So... Um, it's it's it's, it's a, a significant signal that you're least expecting a multi-week uh, rally, if not longer. So, anyway, I wanted to point that out. I thought that was important. Yeah, for sure. So, no, I'm with you, man. All right, so let's go to chart three. Okay. And this is a VBIX. Yes. And I found the which is a VIX of the VIX, and the VBIX actually. Um, it's more responsive than the VIX. So the VIX, VBIX, actually will turn up or down first before the VIX will. Okay. Uh, so I'm doing some work there. But anyhow, we got a signal on the um, VBIX. Actually, I, I do a lot of stuff with acceleration. You know, the faster something goes, the closer it is to reversal. Right. So if the market just creeping up slowly, it could go on for a long time. When it starts to go really fast, it's probably going parabolic, and it's due for a correction. Same with down. Yes. So if you want to have a pullback, you want to be fast and furious. Right. Because th- then you're knowing you're going into probably a climatic low. And this is kind of an indicator of the major, that acceleration of the up and down. And I use the VIX, VVIX, because it works a little bit better than that. Because I tried it on the VIX, didn't work as good. Okay. But anyhow, so I measure the RSI, which is kind of an acceleration uh, indicator. I use it for the VIX, just a 14-day period. And also I use the three-period rate of change for the VIX. And at this last low, actually, this this one kicked in on the 18th. The bottom was the 19th. And so this is kicked in, too. And it, it doesn't give a lot of signals, but you may get... You know, not one every month, but you may get one every couple of months. So it's kind of another reason why I don't think this is just a pop in the down, or this is start of a downtrend. I, I think, you know, it's the start of another uptrend. Yes. Because these signals are kind of rare. Um, and matter of fact, you know, if you look at early uh, 2024, that red line in there, it can actually happen in the um, uh, uptrend. And so... I just put that in there. So, I see anyhow, that. I see that. Uh, yeah, I think it's something important here um, that this rally is, since, you know, a couple of indicators kicked in on the weekly charts, I think it's something intermediate term wise. So, no, well, uh, you know, you can see today's action, Tim. I mean, you know, I mean, Facebook came out with numbers, the numbers were all right, but yet what he was going to spend in the future, I mean, that's what tanked the market last night. Um, but you can see this S and P. We were down 84. Now you're only down 24. It's like really, <laughs> and you know the volume is not that heavy, man. So it's going to get intriguing. You know we got Microsoft and we have uh, Google coming out with numbers at four o'clock. So that's going to move the S and P's and the uh, NDX for sure. So, but I, well, I but hopefully the you know ZBT will kick in by next Wednesday. That'd be I, nice. Oh man, and, let uh, me tell you, we're going to be partying. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be partying. That's right. <laughs> So, um, we've got sharp. Yeah, the music's going to come back on here. Um, but I got I got a couple of things to, to okay. come uh, over on the gold issues. And I think uh, oh yeah, everybody will want to hear it. So these, we're going to want to hear it because these at. gold stocks are taking off like a rocket ship. Newmont came out with their numbers, Tim. They were huge numbers. Newmont's up over twelve percent, and it's take, uh, of course all the rest of the gold stocks are going with it big time. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us. Tim, we're going to take a call here. We got our man Costa from Boston. Costa, what's going on, brother? Right. What's going on over here? Tim, what's the name, Tommy? Yeah, you're having a good day today, Costa. <laughs> oh, no. No more. went through the roof. I know. I like it. We're having a hard time hearing you, though. 
But so you oh, want to look at BMI, right? A uh, BMI. BMI, Bristol Myers. Where's so, the entry point? Forty bucks. They're at forty-four, oh, so it's an ABC down. So Bristol Myers is getting smoked out here today, folks. And you're gonna make sure that the volume dies down on you. You're down, you're down 10% today. This is an ABC down to t to 40 bucks. Now, what you also have at the bottom of this consolidation? I mean, you you know how this thing works, Costa. You just make sure that you know the volume dies on the vine when it's going down to try to test this 40 dollar area. I expect it's gonna do it because you're breaking the lows. You're doing it with volume. You know the. The low of the consolidation is 42, but I expect this thing's going to go to 40, man. And then what happens is that it does have a lot of strength going all the way back. This is going to bring you back actually to 2012. That's where it broke topside from. So bottom line is that 12 years later, it's coming back to test that whole breakout area. Okay, Tommy, thank you. You have a great one and a safe one, man. And we'll talk with our man, Mr. Tim Orden. Tim, I have, right, the chart I have up right now is number three. All right, so that flips the chart four. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, we keep showing this chart, and I think the bottom's already in, and these are momentum charts. It doesn't really catch, try to catch the bottom. Yes. Or try to catch the top, but try to catch you where, you know, the trend is. So you really, after you get a bicycle, you want these trend charts to kick in. Okay. And the monthly right now, it still has not. If the bottom window uh, is still below the Bollinger Band, which yeah. is the up-down volume. The next one up is the uh, uh, advanced decline. It's right at the mid, mid Bollinger Band. To yeah. get a bicycle, you need to close above it. But what I wanted to talk about is the uh, the monthly GDF GLD ratio. Okay, this is the ratio that you want to turn up. That's when GDX is outperforming GLD, which is gold. Yes. And you want gold stocks to outperform gold, and that's what happens in uptrends. If you've ever looked at yeah. all the way back, fathers, you want, when this ratio is rising, then gold stocks are outperforming gold, and that's what happens in bull markets. And I got it circled in red there over to the left, where we are right now. And uh, Bollinger Band, mid Bollinger Band's at 0.16. And GDX G roll ratio is 0.16. So this one may kick in uh, by month. You know, it's actually a monthly chart, so you have to wait until month end, which is next uh, Tuesday. You, you know what's and so cool so, about that, Tim? Is today this ratio is going to go up today, man? Because <laughs> gold's only up seven dollars, yeah. and these stocks are up five percent to ten percent. <laughs> so. This is yeah. cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, GDX is up almost four percent. Yeah, putting this update on, so this could kick in this month. So, but the other ones will eventually kick in, uh, but they have a net. But so let's flip to chart five, which okay. is uh, the the weekly chart. Yes. So we showed this chart last time, and actually, it's it's been on a buy signal for I think the last week, and it's, it's still on a, a buy signal, and these signals. Once they cross, you know, I got years when the previous signals. So when it does cross, you know, the last one we had in, in 2023 actually failed, which is those uh, two red lines there. Right. And, it's, you know, the weekly can fail. Usually the monthly don't. Usually the weekly don't either. But every once in a while it, it gives a whipsaw. But, but you know, they don't give really two whipsaws in a row. So I think if it, once this kicks in, it's going to stay in. So in my opinion... Previous rallies of this type have lasted a year and a half, and that's usually at a minimum, and sometimes they go four years, which we've gone down pretty much four years. In other words, the last four years, the advanced decline and up-down volume for, GD, uh, for GDX was basically uh, nil. It, 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 there was no, pow no power to it. So if this turns up, most gold stocks are going to do really well. Right. And that's turning up right now. So... What does that mean? Let's go to chart um, six. Okay. And, uh, okay, so, so anyhow, the blue area, so anyhow, when this weeklies turn up, you can expect something similar to what happened in 2016, which is kind of left of the chart there. I got yes. 16 months up. Because that was the and best so run that we've had since the beginning of a 2000, of course, we had the run, but 2016 was a monster one, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was coming off of, well, this was a 2019, I guess, signal where the um, 
uh, they had the uh, COVID crash in there. Oh, yeah. That didn't seem to, to affect the signal. Probably should have gone back faster and back longer and looked at that 2016 bottom. But, you know, that rally in 2019 lasted, you know, over a year, 16 months. Yep. And so when this weekly chart turns up, this will imply something similar to what happened in 2019 to 2020. And what that means is that the uh, up-down volume advanced client indicator, which is all this blue stuff, is above zero. And that means if you got volume going into these gold stocks, up volume compared to down volume, you got a big rally going on. And so I'm thinking this is still very early in the rally. Yes. If you look on the top window is the GDX, and I got that dotted red line going across there. Yes. And we're at, yeah, if you notice, we're right smack at that line right now. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. right, 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 right. Cool. So, yeah. so what's supposed to happen, you know, Gordon Weisskopf, what's supposed to happen at those trend lines? You're supposed to see a sign of strength. Yes. Well, if you go down to the bottom window, this thing's actually still going up. Even though the GDX over the last, what, three, couple of weeks or so has gone virtually nowhere. And that up-down volume is, is still accelerating. Right. So you're, you're probably, what's probably going to go on here is a sign of strength right through that line. So yeah. this, is, this indicator suggests that things are not getting weaker. They're actually still getting stronger. And most likely you'll have Weisskopf sign of strength through that dotted line. And a sign and of strength, there, folks. We're going to go on for another year and a half. So. <laughs> and a sign but. of strength, folks, is wide price spread, accelerated volume. And if you have to look at it twice and think, is it a sign of strength or not? It, that means it's not. Because even if you don't understand technicals, when you see a sign of strength, man, go look at Newmont today. Newmont is a sign of strength. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so anyhow, so that's that's what's probably coming down the pike. So I'm thinking. Uh, the low of, of 2022, that October, I think was a major low. That was the head of a head and shoulders bottom. Yeah. And we've been we've been screwing around with this neckline. You know, right now we're right smack at it. So either we go through it, which the bottom window of this indicator suggests that we will, and that probably we'll, we'll have some sort of a surge. Maybe I don't know, to 40 or something. I don't know what it'll. I'll go to, but uh, uh, this market is, is not done yet. It's, it's still, if we're hung, if, we're clo if this indicator is clo uh, close to zero or going down as we're uh, screwing around with that line, that dotted line, then I'm thinking, yeah, we're not going to break through it. It's doing the opposite. We're accelerating. So, yeah, I love it. It's going to get stronger short term. I love it. Tim, it's always a pleasure. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend. We look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday, and we look forward to riding this market, man. <laughs> All right. Have a great one. So. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.